everyone. Hello and welcome. It's Friday and it is crazy for chocolate day. How much fun is that? Have you guys been watching all of the cool presenters today? I have been watching and looking at all the cool things people are creating and that people are making and cooking. And uh, I love chocolate. Chocolate's one of my favorite things. So we are going to have a good time today. Let me bring up your comments here. I'm coming to you through StreamYard today so that um, you can see a close-up of what I'm working on. So um, we're going to get started in just a second. Thanks for popping on, you guys. This is great. So I am trying to... Oh, hang on. I've got my reference photo here, but it seems to be interfering from my iPad to my... Um, there we go. I lose my cursor sometimes. It's so weird, but I want to bring up the comments. So there we are. Hello, hello, um, and welcome. So chocolate, my favorite thing. So I grabbed some chocolates and I do have my hot chocolate here. Hi, Tracy. Good afternoon. Thanks for thinking of this cool, cool, fun um, project for us. So I am going to take, I bought a bunch of old tin little pots and things from the flea market and I'm going to repurpose them. I've been sitting on my shelf for a good while. I have some really cute pieces. Let me just, let me just do this real quick so I can see you. So I've got um, this adorable little picture. Um, hey, Georgie, I heard you have rain up there in the new, up in new England. And hey, Pam, thank you for watching. So I've got all these little, um, they were like silver plated pieces that I'm going to paint. Actually, this has been a cute little hot chocolate pot too. That's really cute. I want to paint that. So far, I have just primed them. Um, this was just an old tin piece. The others were like a uh, silver plated piece. Hey, Tara. Hello. Hey, Cynthia. The one I'm going to work on today, and let's switch it around. Let's remove that banner so you can actually see what we're doing today. This was a great shape. This, this was an old tin piece. It had the wood uh, handle and a little wood knob on top, which I loved. So I taped it off and I just spray painted it with a primer. So I did get a little bit of a start today so that we could jump right in and have fun painting. Hey, Tanya and Charlotte. Hey, guys, thanks for popping in here. I so appreciate it. This is a fun day. So if you have not watched yet, stick around because all um, afternoon we have more chocolate themed uh, creatives coming on to, to, for you all afternoon. I've sketched on a little bunny. So I decided to go with a hot chocolate theme. I'm a big hot chocolate girl. I do not like coffee. I'm forcing myself to drink tea, but I love hot chocolate. I'm going to paint a little bunny. I have some reference photos here that I'm going to now open up again since um, I don't know why it was kind of wonky on my iPad. So I'm going to bring that up and I've base coated the background just to get started here. So all I did was take some shades of blue and brush them on. I did a little darker to the edges, just I like that look. So the same on the top, you can see I sort of um, like a little gradient here. Very simple, acrylic paints. I just painted it on while the paint was wet. I got a little darker around the knob and got a little lighter as I went out. Hey, Cindy, I know, good for, you're my friend from Webster, so welcome. Um, Owen, um, it's nice to see everybody here. Anyways, thank you guys. So I did get a little start. What I did is I did the background painting and I decided to write hot chocolate on here. I think in the background, I will be doing some little snowflakes and things. Uh, it's funny because I'm in Florida now, so I'm from New England, and I'm in Florida for uh, the winter, and it just seems funny because today is the first really warm, warm day we've had in a few, uh, in a, quite a few weeks, and it's warmed up nicely, so I'm drinking hot chocolate anyways because it's my favorite. Hi, Lisa. So I just simply did a base coat. I'm going to start with my little bunny. It's going to be just a little bunny holding a little hop of a cup of hot chocolate, a cup of hot chocolate. Um, so let's get started with base coating so we can get to the fun little details. I like to get the base coating on, then add some shading, highlighting, which you've seen me do. A little decorative, uh, maybe a little decorative knit on his, I'm gonna put a little headband, a little scarf, a little sweater, a little cup of hot chocolate, like I said, we'll make some little steam coming up. Hey, Fratima. So as usual, I have an ambitious project here, but let's jump in and see how far we get with it. I usually do end up finishing. So it's a little awkward because this is round. So sometimes if you have something round, you could take like a little little soft uh, dish towel or tea towel or something, set it on so it doesn't roll. I'm going to just try holding it. I'll have some extra paper towels here. Let me get it so that you're going to see it. I don't want to, um, I don't want you to miss anything. So let me just do this. Okay, 
I'm just using my ordinary craft paints, ordinary craft acrylics, and just some synthetic brushes, easy uh, peasy um, to get supplies. Okay, I'm going to base coat my little uh, bunny and her ears. She's going to be white, kind of a white. Yeah, I'm going to do her white because you know what? That will stand out nice against the blue background. I've sketched her on first with chalk because that's easily uh, erased and I can, you know, get it just right. And then I went over a little bit with pencil because I really want to place those eyes. I didn't want to be fooling around trying to just do those by eye. So I did sketch them with the chalk and now I am just going to paint around those little eyes. The little nose, I'll give a little indication where it goes, but I can paint that on. Just white acrylic, it'll take a few coats. The acrylics um, are a little transparent sometimes, some colors more than others, but um, I just let it dry and then put another coat. So just use, have a little patience, just let it dry. Looks like a little ghost face right now. Actually, it looks a little like Jack Skellington, doesn't it? Um, let's get some ears. The little middle of the ears will be pink. So let me just get on an idea where those ears are going. All base coating. I'm not worried about shading and highlighting or anything yet. I'm just getting them placed on there. I'm going to have mittens on his hand so I don't have to worry about little bunny hands. We'll do little mittens. Um, so have you been watching the creators today? What a fun theme. I love our themed Fridays. Um, and today's I had to jump on for sure because I do love my chocolate. So, um, Hey, Cecile. Nice to see you. Thanks for popping in. Thank you, you guys. I'm going to use a pink, maybe more like a little salmon-y colored for the ear, inside of the ears, rather than a bright pink. I will take a little red and a little white. I just want it so it's not like a hot pink. I want the little inside of the ears to be just that color. Now, I'm using a little bit of a wider flat brush, and I'm using it on the chisel edge. I like that. I can get a nice line there but it's whatever you're comfortable with. If you're comfortable with um, a smaller brush, then by all means, just do a smaller brush. I have a little given a little thought to my color palette, which I do. I don't want to just start grabbing random colors. When I design something, I keep in mind what color palette do I want to use and not go all over the place. So I've got some, I'm going to use some oranges, some salmon colors, and some blues in the sweater, maybe some teals. Um, in an ivory off-white color. I don't want to go all over the place with the colors. I like to sort of keep it within a few colors and then use those colors to mix uh, each each color with, just so it's, a, it's like a little cohesive. So you can probably see, you can see through the, the blue a little bit through that salmon. So I'll just do one more coat after that. Uh, it's drying pretty quick, which is nice, but let's get a base coat on the sweaters and everything. And then we can have the, do the fun part of all the little, uh, designs. Oh, thanks, Pam. Pam, it's going to be fun. It's, um, again, I knew I was going to do something hot chocolate themed today. Um, wasn't quite sure. Then I remembered I had all of these pieces I wanted to prime. So I did that yesterday and I just grabbed one, but that little tiny pot would have been a cute little hot chocolate pot too. So I am just going to flip this around and try to just use the brush to the full advantage by really pressing down and, and filling that big area right in. Now, like I said, if you're more comfortable with a little brush and you want to outline it and fill it in, by all means, there are, are no rules. There is no right and wrong. When I teach, I show you how I do things. It's by all means not the only way. There's many ways to achieve the same results, and I want you to try whatever works best for you. So don't um, watch what I do, uh, but don't think you have to uh, be a slave to getting it just exactly the way I do things. I, I like to see how people, in, it, you know, develop different ways, and uh, we all come up with different outcomes, which is what we want. It's not, it's, you're not doing this to try to get it to look just like mine, really. You just want to use your own imagination. So I'm going to use many colors in the sweater and hat band and whatnot, but I'm going to start with just the off-white as a base coat. I'm just going to have little strips of that color in the knit items that the little bunny is wearing. What is the weather like? I know, George, you said it's rainy. I know I talked to my friend Mary up in Mass a little while ago, and it's um, kind of rainy. Beautiful here today. What's it like where you are? Where are you, too? I'd love to know. Cecile, I just went to the hardware store and bought Rust-Oleum primer spray can. I uh, sometimes just use the primer gray. This time I got... 
uh, a white because I knew I wanted a light color on some of these pieces. So just a white spray can of Rust-Oleum primer. That's all I've used. If anyone else has suggestions, let me know. I, um, I'd love to hear what you're all doing, but uh, that's what I use this time. Three degrees, Pam. Oh my goodness! I know. I'm. I mean, you know, I, like coming from New England, this is what 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 we always had. But uh, I tell you what, I'm enjoying, and I'm not even going to say the cooler weather we've had in Florida because it's, if it's 40s and 50s to me, that's warm enough. Um, it, it's not like anything like what you have and what we had up in New England. This has a really cool little dimensional border on the bottom of the teapot, so I did paint it in a darker blue. And that's why you see me making this little zigzag here because the little bunny is going to just go down to the top of that little border there. So I think that's a good way to end. Afterwards, what I do to a piece like this is I put a polyurethane on there, a water-based poly. You can use a spray. I usually use the brush on. I get it again at the hardware store and it is the um, a polycryl, Minwax polycryl. It's a water-based finish. I use it on anything that I want to finish most of my tin pieces, it gives it a shine and it protects it. But um, if it's a canvas even and I want to have a little shine to it, I will do that. So um, there we are. I know he's, I guess he's a little off center, but we're not going to worry about that. North Idaho, Suzanne. Oh, high 30s, which isn't too, too bad. Um, so anyways, now I'm going to just put a little quick second coat of what I have here. Just a little, it doesn't have to be, uh, I'm not taking my time and doing every little bit. I just want to get them, for the most part, the blue that's showing through covered. If I'm using a light paint and I'm going, um, and if I'm going into a lighter color, I just wipe my brush off. But if I'm going um, from a little darker, which was that pinky color, to white, I will, I will rinse my brush. I will be careful to try to get all of the water off my brush when I am rinsing, though. I don't want to add water to the paint um, unless I was going for a wash technique, which I'm not. Right now I'm going for coverage. So when I do wash my brush, I do try to pat it out and get all that water out of the brush. Okay, so I'll get that second coat. And then after this, we'll start with some shading. And I'm going to, again, just dry that off because I'm going into the... Um, off white color so I didn't really need to rinse off there so I'm going just a little second coat here and you know what I would do probably next is work on the face and get the features in when I'm doing a portrait or animals or something like that I want to put their face in I want them to have a little personality and they sort of take on a little personality when you get their eyes and nose and whatnot done so we'll do that next and so anyone else chocolate chocolate ho choco chocoholics like me i really I, I know i love you know savory and the chips and things but i can take or leave i don't have to have them but i always want a little something sweet after a meal i want a little piece of chocolate i have a little bowl of you know what i love is the little da dove the little dark chocolate ones which i stocked up on at target after christmas because they were marked 70 percent off so i did um stockpile some of them i don't care if they're in a christmas wrapper i they taste the same to me so i haven't cecile what is that i've not even heard of slick stick but i'd be interested to know and i can look it up but it, let me know what that is i never thought of that but you're right when it's cold or even if you're in a windy spot it's kind of difficult sometimes to get um the spray out there i have a little cup in the hand here and that's going to be that's going to be white. So let me paint that in real quick. And I'm just going to use my white paint and a smaller brush. And it's just going to be a little cup here. Sort of placing these things for me so I know where it's like a little puzzle. I know where things go. It's going to be a little uh, rim on the bottom of that cup. The handle would be hardly seen because of the mitten but i'll have a little bit showing so i'll do that the little mittens i think i'll go with um like an orangey color that i'm going to use in the sweater so let me just mix up something that's not bright orange a little bit duller a little softer looking uh, so i'm just going to make what's going to be a little bit of a mitten showing through and this is a color that we'll use in the design work of the little sweater as well uh, so here I'm just not going to make, you know, I'm not going to worry about struggling to make hands or anything, although pause on a rabbit. 
So we just do that for now. We're getting there. Almost everything is covered except for the eyes. It's looking like a little lamb kind of to me. Hi, Sarah. Charlotte, yeah, me too. Always with the chocolate. Suzanne, I have to say I have eaten all my Halloween chocolate and candy. That would that'd be too hard. I couldn't, I, if it's here, I'll eat it, even if it's in the freezer. All right, so there we are. Let's do a little shadow on the face and then get into some of that uh, features. So I have two cups of water here. I know you can't see them. One, I just rinse my brush out. One, I keep pretty clean that I will use for when I'm doing a wash of sorts. Um, and actually, you know what? Oh, it's dry, just shiny. Just, it looks it looks a little wet. So I use just a wash. I just dip my brush into water. I'm going to take a tiny bit of Payne's Gray on my brush and pat it out. And you might have seen me do this wash sometimes. That's why I want clean water. And I'm going to just shadow or give a little shadow around the face where the little headband is going to be. So it's just, I know it's hard, a little hard to see there. Let me get some fresh Payne's Gray. It works best when you paint. Paint is very fluid and not a little dried up. Mine was. Just water on my brush, pat it out, tiny, tiny bit of gray. And then I just on my palette there. And I want that little bit of a gray towards the headband where the shadow will be caused, cast. So you can see I'm just going right around. And see, I've got a little shadow there now. It just starts making the, making the little face look three-dimensional. And... And let's do a little shadow here, maybe a little shadow here at the bottom of the ears, maybe even the back side of the ears, a little gray there. Now I can go back after with a little brush, a little detail brush and pull some hairs out and make it look a little fuzzier if I wanted to, because it is fur after all, so we might just do that. Okay. Now, I think um, I think I'm going to just put the features on. I'm going to even that out a little bit. I see I have a big bit of that. And if I overlap onto the other pieces, that's okay, because I can go back and just give that a little quick um, touch up. Okay, let's get a little nose, which again, using my color palette that I've chosen, I'm going to stick with the colors I have here. So his little nose will be this kind of a pinky orange as well. Oh, Cecile, I'm going to look it up. Is it a, something you brush on or spray on? Because that sounds interesting. I'm always I'm always finding out new things. You think you've seen everything or used everything, and I love finding out about some new things. We all do that as crafters too, don't we? You think you've done all the crafts there are, and lo and behold, there's something new. So his little nose is done. Let's get his eyes in. I'm going to I'm going to fill them in all with Payne's Gray to start, and then I'll get a nice little, maybe like an orangey brown in there as well, once that dark is dry. So let's just place them. Using the little round detail brush, I think I'll go upside down. I don't know, which sometimes just helps. I want this sort of a shaped eye. I'm going to make his eyes pretty big. Uh, when you're painting animals sometimes, or you want something cute and whimsical, or, or a younger child, say, you want bigger eyes. So I'm going a little bigger than... Um, than I ordinarily would if I was just painting like a little rabbit painting. But this is going to kind of be whimsical, not really cartoony, but a little bit. So we're going to get those nice big eyes on this guy. Trying to make them the same size. One thing to be careful about when you are doing your eyes and when we get to it, the highlights is you want to do the highlights in the same in the same place, uh, like one o'clock, one o'clock, that sort of thing. But I'm gonna do that and show you exactly what I mean once this dries. So there, we've kind of got the, uh, the basic eye in, kind of a little bit of an elongated almond shape. While I'm here, let me get the little lines for the mouth in. I'm gonna thin my paint a tiny bit. When I'm doing very fine details, I always thin the paint a, a little bit. And we'll just get a little a little mouth. It's very simple. We're not going to do anything really. I've painted some rabbits and animals very detailed. This is going to be a little on the simple side. I might just do this on the bottom of the nose since I have the dark there. I can also, let me just do it here where the little fingers are going to be on the mitten because I'm going to highlight still, but that gives me an idea where those go. All right, let that dry and we will get 
another coat so they're nice and dark i know it looks dark there but it's a little bit lighter um in person it's a little streaky i can see through it let's shade where around the cup because that will cast a shadow and i'm actually going to shade around my bunny too to stand him out from the background so let's do that first you can get a good idea of how i do that wash i'm going to use a bigger square brush i'm dipping it into my clean water i'm patting it off so it's not dripping and then i'm going to take maybe a little of the paint's gray let me mix a blue paint's gray mix i don't want it to be all paint's gray i want a little blue in this so just a dark blue to go around the bunny and make him pop out from the background. So I'm just mixing up a little bit of, you, know, you can see it there, just a little Payne's gray and a little blue. I'll mix it up good because I want it to be a solid color. Try not to mix that dark blue brush off in my clean water. <laughs> and watch my time, because I know we're just 45 minute segments. So uh, 12.15 and we have till one o'clock, cool. Okay, taking some of that on the corner of my brush. Pat it out a little bit. And until I do it on here, it might not be dark enough, but we'll see. So I just want to go right around my bunny. My brush is kind of fraying a little bit, but. Okay, so you can see it's going to kind of stand out a little more. It's wet, so I have time to kind of blend it a little bit. If it's not dark enough, I can go back. I might want it a little, not too bad, not too bad. Let's see, let's get it a little darker. The brush um, is a little splayed, which I usually like to have a, a better brush, but let's just play with it and get it the way we want. And I'm gonna do this right around the whole body of this little creature. And I just look at it. So I just stand back and say, geez, that's kind of a heavy shadow. I can just soften it more. And I'm gonna do this right around the whole body to set him apart from the background. This double loading of your brush Sometimes it could be done with two colors. Sometimes I do it with just water in a color. It's a little brush stroke that might take a little practice to get the hang of, but I'll tell you, you'll use it an awful lot. And it's kind of fun just to sit and practice sometimes. And thus now we'll just get in between there. I might have enough damp this on the brush that I don't have to reload with water. So let's see. And because it's a dimensional uh, little piece we're working on it is a little crazier to try to you know I always, always having to tip it and get in all the places I might do a little spatter like I said I'm going to put some snowflakes on the background so I might even spatter a little bit spattering is fun it makes snow or stars I do it with an old toothbrush it sort of just gives the nice look to uh, anything wintry or, or or something like this you could almost, if you wanted to, do the red or the dark blue and then spatter with the toothbrush to get that old tin look again. You know, the, the tin uh, coffee pots you see that are that way. All right. It's a little lighter here. I kind of like it a little lighter. So I might go in with my color of my, you know, I could go in and kind of just soften that a little bit so it's not such a harsh outline, but that's fine. All right. So there he is. He's kind of popped out a little more now. And a quick, another coat on my eyes so I can show you how we are going to complete those because the eyes make them. I mean, once you get the eyes in there, it kind of makes the whole little design. I might give a little shadow on one side of my nose there. Maybe make up a maroon with a tiny, tiny touch of Payne's Gray into my red. You'll see a lot of times I won't have a lot of colors. I will mix a lot of my colors. There's many colors out there to choose from, and they're fun to buy, and I do too. If you can mix, you learn a lot about mixing color. Um, it, it makes the painting a lot easier. So I might just on that side, give them a little shadow. Same on the bottom of the ears here. I might just bring up a little, little shadow there. Under that little bit of, under that little bit of the ear turned over. All right. Okay, good. Dixie Bell. Oh, Carolyn, I'm going to look that up. Thank you guys for the suggestions. Since I'm playing with these pinky colors, let's just go in and just little highlights on the little gloves. Another coat of paint, I think, on that white cup because I can really see the 
background showing through. So let's just do that. Another quick coat of the white. So a lot of time is spent base coating until you get to the really fun bits. That's why I did that whole background first, because it was simply just painting it blue. And I didn't want, you know, we wouldn't have had time to do that and these fun little bits. I've got a background darker color on the little mittens. I went with the salmon color, did a mid-tone. Let's take the same color, add a little white, and just get a little tiny shade lighter. Maybe even lighter than that. Just to give it three little values there. And that'll be all we need. Let me go up to his ears now. I'm going to go to a liner brush, which is just a long brush with a long tip. Keeping your paint thin, using a liner brush, you can get some nice long strokes, for instance, for grasses and different things. I'm going to use it to make a little bit of texture of hair on the ears. So I've thinned down the white a little bit. Got my liner brush. I always like to pull towards me. And let's just make him a little furrier looking just by simply putting some little lines up there. So now he's looking. I can even put it over here. And so it's just looking a little furrier. Same over here. I'm just going to pull it from the end. You can see kind of, yeah. And I don't have to do much more than this. I've got my shadow there. My first coat the two coats I have on the ears are a little grayer, so this brighter white is my, my third tone, my third, my lightest. And I can even do a few coming up here even. There, and if we don't have much of, of the body showing here. I may just take a bright white now, because again, even though we base coated that white face twice, still a little gray, we could go ahead and just bring up some little strokes here with just the white and then we'll go into those eyes because we want to just i'm just doing little strokes just little strokes that will um look like fur a little bit oh while i have the white there let's just do a little white highlight on this left side of the nose and now I want to get a little bit of a reddish brown. I can make that. I've got some red here, maybe a little brown, a little Payne's gray. I'm just going to make a dark red brown, kind of like a burnt sienna. I could grab a burnt sienna, but this will work fine. And I want to do um, the iris with this. So let's see if I just do the iris kind of like a little semicircle down here. Both sides. Eyes really just make the whole little guy come alive. So you see how we did the semicircle, but not across the top, just on the bottoms. I know it's, it's hard for me to see on the screen there. I don't know if you can see it better than I can. Um, let me make it a little brighter. I'll make it a little orange in there, just mostly so that you can see it. Let's see if that helps. So I'll just give it a little bit lighter shade. Actually, I like that on top. So when I say you want to put a highlight on and you want to put them in the right direction, uh, let me, this just got a little out of round. Let me just round that off a little. Okay, so any eyes, people eyes, animal eyes, whatever, they look dull and zombie-like, as cute as they could be. That way you need some highlight. So take a little, little tip of my brush with some white paint. Maybe I'll just do a little dot here. A little dot or a comma, which I might do, but make sure you do it when I say like both at one o'clock, you know what I mean, not one at 11 and one at one, just like that. I might take a tiny little uh, comma stroke down here. Uh, I don't know if I like that. I guess so. I guess so. Okay. So it was very, it wasn't very complicated, the face, right? Um, whiskers, liner brush again, be the perfect thing. I'm going to use a Payne's gray, and I'm going to add white. I don't want to do real heavy, dark black whiskers. It would just be too much. I'm going to go on the dark side with Payne's gray, but I am going to lighten it a little bit. You can always go back darker. And here's where you also add some water so that you have a nice thin line, and we can just do some little whiskers. Oh, 
I sometimes like to break up the lines for the whiskers so it's not these solid lines. Uh, good. Not loving the white edge of the nose because it's a white bunny and it just looks weird. So let's just go back and do that. Fix that. And now let's start playing with the design work on the knit, which is going to be cool. Oh, it does. Okay, Susan, because I didn't know if I liked it, but I, I think I do like the little comma now. So um, this was just, Pam, it was just an old metal. Um, I can't take that top off because it sticks, but it was just really, you know, not as rusty as that. But I sand them, I wash it down as best I can, and then I spray the primer on. It's not perfect probably, but. Okay, we still need to shade the clothing a little bit. I'm going to use the better flat brush this time. Ooh, not, well, maybe, let's see. I was using that brush to put glue adhesive on for my gold leafing, so that's probably why it's kind of fussy. Let's try this one. Okay, I'm going to um, probably use the Payne's Gray again to shade this sweater and the headband and whatnot. I've done the same thing. I've got some water, a little bit of the paint, pat it down. There will be a shadow under the little scarf there. There'll be a shadow around the cup. I'm doing it a little rough. I'm not trying to be perfect. Once we get all that little detail work on the scarf, you're not going to really even notice it. Um, now, there are little arms here, so you'd get a little shadow in maybe there where the little arm is coming down. Let's do that. So this is kind of defining the sweater now, right, a little bit. Um, I'm even going to do it across the top of the scarf. Headband. Um, I don't know if I really need it on the headband. Oh, maybe it's on the sides. Maybe on the side. Just a little something, but I don't think we really need it. Okay. So there he is. There she is, and I'm going to put like a little bit of steam coming up afterwards on that cup. So let's have fun with the design. Just pretend it's like a little knit sweater, and I want to use some of these oranges. So let's make a little bit darker orange than that salmon color, and then we'll use the salmon color too. Um, some light blues, I think. Let's see. And, and it's really just having fun. Just You can make zigzags. You can just look up little patterns of sweaters or just get some illustrations or something and take a look. I'm just going to do little zigzags to start. Pick two or three colors, three or four colors, whatever you like, and you can just I'm going to kind of do them all so they sort of match. Just a little flat detail brush, I mean, flat, a round detail brush for that. I'm just going to keep my eye on the time. We've got about, oh, about 12, 13 minutes or so. So the pattern on the sweater, I'm going to make it go this way. And I'm going to go in with other colors, like I say, maybe little other kinds of shapes. Just think of how the sweater would look. You'd have, let's, um, we'd go up and down this way on the sleeves. And it doesn't have to be perfect. It's going to be far from perfect. But you can still see the shading through. So you still see the, the appearance of the arms being in front of the body of the sweater. So there's one color. Let's let's play around. Let's get some blue. I want some blue in there too because we have the blue background. So I'm going to mix up a little bit of that light blue, which I'm just about out of. So let me get a little more blue out. Hello, 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 you guys. Look at everybody's popping on. That's great. Thank you guys for watching. Are you having a fun Friday? What's going on for the weekend? Any craft? projects or fun events you guys have going on. Um, I don't have a whole lot planned. I have some friends visiting tomorrow, so that's I'm excited about that. And uh, really nothing, I guess, is football Sunday, right? But Rita, hello, my friend. Um, I sent you a message. Call me anytime when I'm off. I'm around. So, um, yeah. Okay. What do we want to do for this kind of a little pattern? I'm just looking at little patterns. Um, you could almost do any kind of little random shape. And then you can detail as much as you want. You can add little dots. You can add little dashes. 
That's looking a little like a knit thing, right? And I'm just going to do the same sort of thing all around. Whatever is that, like this is a little knit headband. You could do, do just a hat. You could do nothing. You could just do the face of the um, bunny. I thought the headband would be cute. And once we get some snowflakes painted. And, you know, I won't get every little bit done probably. So what I always do is get a picture of it finished and put that up for you. If you have any questions even afterwards and you're watching the replay, pop them in there because I come back and I look. Or feel free to message me if you have a question that you would like me to answer or a comment or a suggestion. Always open to all of the above. I might put a little cuff on the sweater. I'm not sure I have room. Let's try and see. Maybe some white, some, some little white touches too. We have the um, ivory colored for the sweater, but we want to do some white on there as well. I am not worried about like, oh, those little shapes aren't all exactly alike. Some are thin, some are lighter, darker. We don't care. This is a little fun, folk arty kind of piece. And you want it to look hand done. We don't want it to be so perfect that it looks like it was, you know, made in China or, on, you know, on an assembly line or something. We want it to look handcrafted. A little white, some white dots maybe, or some white lines. Let's see. Let me get a little bit of white out, fresh white, um, because it's going to be thinner paint. And we can just, you know, sometimes I need to get some fresh paint out so it is um, not dried up at all. Let's see, would this work? Maybe just do to the side of this another. So it's very subtle. I know you don't see it much, but I do like the way the white looks in between. Just doing a little bit of a zigzag. And I don't have to do all of this. I'm going to hop over and finish the mug and uh, the little steam, too. I want to get it so you can see most of it. We'll do just the little white zigzag here. I'm just going like on one side of that orange stripe and just giving it a little white zigzag. I will continue it later down here. But for now, let's just do that. I think I might need a little bit of the dark blue. You know me. This is all I'm gonna do. Oh, wait, one more thing. Oh, wait, one more, one more thing. Hi, Annabelle, I loved your um, your your no-bake cooking. That was fabulous. I'm, a no, I'm not much of a baker, but I can probably handle the no-bake, so I'm gonna to have to give that a try. So maybe dots, let's just do some dots maybe with the dark blue. And whatever you do is gonna, could look sort of like a pattern of some sweater, right? You could do those little arrow shaped lines up and down to make it uh, appear more like a knit thing. I love the way that dark blue is popping next to the light blue. And you know why too that you're having a nice look here is with the uh, orange and the blue being complementary colors. Sometimes that works in your favor to attract the eye. Sometimes with like red and green, it might be a little bit crazy looking, but sometimes I like to play with using the complementary colors near each other to Purple and yellow, for instance. They play nice off each other sometimes. There. So that's what I'm going to do for now. We'll finish the rest, but I want to get the little cup done. And, of course, we do need some shading there. Let's get some co hot cocoa in that cup. So I'm going to just mix up a dark brown, maybe a little Payne's gray. My browns are never dark enough, so I always add a little Payne's gray or something to deepen them, or a dark blue. Try. When you have all your colors, I'll play with them and just mix them. And, and you get something you like, note down what you did. Because it's a great way to discover some nice cohesive colors in your painting. All right. So a little bit of hot chocolate in here. So let's just kind of do an old, a little bit of a overly shape here. It got a little dark brown, but I might go and warm it up with a little of that red-brown color. But there's our hot chocolate. Let me fix the rim in the back because it sort of has part of the sweater. Kind of covering it. I'm not surprised to be honest that I've got getting this far with it. It was a little bit of an ambitious project. Oh, what a surprise. You know how I always am always doing that. Do I want the cup white? It's 
yeah i'm going to put some little designs on it and what i'm going to do to really make it stand out is i'm going to do a better wash all around that as well i want it to have a little uh, lip on the bottom so let me just get a little bit of something i can shade with just under the cup like this and that's not dark enough but if we just do i want like a little not a little foot but you know the little things on the bottom of the cup uh maybe just to make it look rounded i'll give it a little shadow and let's just put some designs on it make it look like it's a little painted cup with some flowers or something let's use our blues keep with the whole family that colors that we're using and just maybe it's got like a little flower pattern i think i want lighter and less uh bright than that a different, couple of different shades, but I'm just kind of going to give it vaguely looking like a little floral pattern. Maybe a blue gray now. Blue gray. Some little swirly bits, just a little hand painted cups, you know, sort of thing. Uh, so it's a little wonky looking at the bottom here, but uh, I can straighten that out. Go back with a little of this uh, shadow color, maybe. Just to reshape that a little bit. I think I will go just quickly around it again with my little wash so that we can, um, so it'll really set out against the sweater. So let's just really make that pop and if, while i'm at it if i feel like i need to deepen up something else i can do that it'll be dark in here behind the handle kind of behind the cup it'll be a little darker so we can darken that up push that back little shadow around this bit of the handle and I just build it up I put it on. If it's too light, I can just go back and just build it up. That's a bit dark, but we might work with it. It's starting to pop now, right? It's starting to pop a little bit. Hi, Bobby. Thank you. Um, you know what? I kind of like Cecile. I kind of like the glossy sometimes. Um, I've been more going towards the glossy, to be honest. I photograph it first because once it's got the gloss on there, it's a hard to uh, to see. I don't want to shine in the photo, so I will photograph the piece if it needs to be photographed first, and then I'll put the... Okay, so it's a little bit of a uh, cup there. I want to get that little warmer shade of hot chocolate in there. I'll probably do a little bit of steam by just using a wet brush with my clean water some clean white, if I can find it. Let me get a little more. Tracy, thank you. Um, I just thought hot chocolate would be my my chocolate uh, thing, so because I love hot chocolate. And I'm just really watering down the white paint. Look at the mess my palette is. And I want it to be a little transparent. I don't want it to be a solid white, so I would probably just take and just do a little bit of a, like a little steam coming up. I'll go over that. Uh, so seal, I use Minwax Polycryl. It's a water-based sealer. I get it at the hardware store in the quartz, and that seems to work great. Uh, I could put a few little, um, very light little, uh, I, I, not eyebrows, but little, let's see, I'll put them on. You can see. I don't want to say whiskers on his eye, but just a little bit of, that's very light. I'd rather start super light, you guys, and darken up as I go. But a couple of little, you know, little uh, hairs coming up there. I can also put some of those in dispersed with the white ones. And I would go and continue the pattern on that. Yeah, Suzanne, good idea. A lot of times when I'm doing something like this, I start with the shading, then I do all that detail work, and then I go back and do it again because I've lost it a little bit. So you're right. Um, so I will go back and deepen up. I usually will do that. Um, and I even think it would work well on the bottom of the headband, a wash. I don't want to do it now because some of that thick paint that I've done with the 
design work is still wet. But let's put a few. We've got a few. Oh, we've got a minute, you guys. So I'm going to just paint some snowflakes around the back here. I'm going to continue on and just detail the bottom of the sweater a little bit. I will take some photos. I just wrote hot chocolate on the top. I really am not the greatest writer of, uh, you know, but it worked. I think it's okay. So I can't believe now we're 45 minutes in and um, we did kind of finish. We're almost done. Lashes, Charlotte. Yes, thank you. You know, I, I lose my words a lot lately. So thank you. I have you guys to help me. What was it the other day? I couldn't remember the name of something. So I want you guys to stick around and watch the rest of the chocolate theme day. It was such a fun time and such fun to paint with you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in as usual. And I really appreciate it. I'm usually here on Mondays, so I will see you again on Monday. But I do love the um, the themes, and Tracy is fabulous with thinking these. Two minutes. Yes, you guys, two minutes. So refresh your pages. See you soon. Bye.